Building a bridge is a complex task. Building a bridge underwater is even more challenging. Engineers have developed ingenious methods to overcome these challenges. One such method is the use of cofferdams. Cofferdams are temporary structures that allow engineers to construct bridge piers in dry conditions, even when surrounded by water. Cofferdams act as watertight enclosures. They're constructed using guide piles and sheet piles. Guide piles are steel beams driven deep into the seabed. They provide a framework for the sheet piles. Sheet piles interlock to form a continuous wall around the construction site. The interlocking design minimizes leakage. A barge is often used as a platform. It supports the machinery and materials needed for construction. Before construction begins, a geotechnical survey is crucial. This survey determines the properties of the soil and its ability to support the bridge pier. Engineers use in situ tests such as cone penetration tests. These tests measure the strength of the soil. They also help determine the depth of the bedrock. This information is essential for designing the cofferdam and determining its required depth. Once the cofferdam is in place, the water inside must be pumped out. This process is known as dewatering. Powerful pumps remove the water, creating a dry work environment. Leakage between the sheet piles can occur due to the pressure difference. To minimize this, double-layered cofferdams are sometimes used. The space between the layers is filled with granular material like sand or gravel. This granular fill helps prevent water seepage. Section 5. Bracing for support counteracting the pressure. As the water is pumped out, the cofferdam walls experience significant pressure from the surrounding water. This pressure can be immense, especially in deeper waters where the force exerted by the water can threaten the structural integrity of the cofferdam. Without proper measures, the walls could buckle or even collapse, leading to catastrophic failures and potential hazards for the construction crew. To counteract this pressure, internal bracing is essential. These braces act as a counterforce, pushing back against the water pressure and providing the necessary support to keep the cofferdam stable. The process of installing these braces is meticulous and requires precision to ensure they are positioned correctly. Bracing frames consisting of struts and whales are installed within the cofferdam. These frames form a network of support that reinforces the structure from within. The installation of these frames is a critical step in the construction process as it ensures that the cofferdam can withstand the external pressures it faces. Struts are horizontal beams that span the width of the cofferdam. They provide lateral support and help distribute the pressure evenly across the structure. The placement of these struts is crucial as they need to be positioned at specific intervals to maximize their effectiveness. Whales are vertical beams that connect to the struts and the cofferdam walls. They work in tandem with the struts to create a rigid framework that can resist the forces exerted by the water. The connection between the whales and struts must be secure to ensure the overall stability of the structure. This bracing system distributes the pressure evenly. By doing so, it prevents any single point from bearing too much load, which could lead to structural failure. The even distribution of pressure is key to maintaining the integrity of the cofferdam. This prevents the cofferdam from collapsing inward. The stability provided by the bracing system ensures that the construction site remains safe and secure, allowing workers to carry out their tasks without the risk of sudden structural failures. The importance of this system cannot be overstated as it is fundamental to the success of underwater construction projects. Section 6, seepage and piping, managing water intrusion. Despite precautions, some seepage can still occur. Seepage is the slow movement of water through the soil and into the cofferdam. Another concern is piping, which is the erosion of soil particles by flowing water. Piping can create channels beneath the cofferdam, leading to significant water intrusion. To manage seepage and piping, continuous pumping is necessary. Sealing techniques, such as grouting, may also be employed to fill any gaps or voids in the soil. Section 7, Concrete, the Underwater Pour. In this section, we delve into the fascinating world of underwater concrete pouring. 
a critical process in the construction of structures like bridges and piers. This method ensures stability and durability in aquatic environments. With the cofferdam in place, dewatered and braced, construction of the bridge pier can begin. The cofferdam acts as a temporary watertight enclosure, allowing the construction team to work in a dry environment even below the water line. This is essential for ensuring the integrity of the structure and the safety of the workers. The most common method for pouring concrete underwater is the tremie method. This technique is favoured for its efficiency and effectiveness in placing concrete in submerged conditions. The tremia method minimises the risk of concrete segregation and ensures a uniform pour. This method involves placing concrete through a pipe called a tremi. The tremi pipe is a long cylindrical tube that allows concrete to be placed precisely where it is needed, without being contaminated by water. The pipe is kept full of concrete, which prevents water from entering and mixing with the concrete. The tremi extends to the bottom of the cofferdam, and concrete is poured from the top. As the concrete flows down the pipe, it displaces the water inside, creating a continuous flow of concrete that fills the formwork. This method ensures that the concrete is placed without interruption, which is crucial for the structural integrity of the pour. The concrete displaces the water inside the tremor, preventing the concrete from mixing with the surrounding water. This displacement is a key aspect of the tremor method, as it ensures that the concrete remains uncontaminated and maintains its designed properties. The result is a solid, homogeneous mass of concrete that can withstand the pressures of the underwater environment. This ensures the concrete cures properly and achieves the required strength. Proper curing is essential for the durability and longevity of the structure. The curing process allows the concrete to hydrate fully, developing the necessary strength to support the loads it will encounter once the structure is in use. Before pouring the main concrete shaft, a seal course is often placed. The seal course acts as a foundation layer, providing a stable base for the subsequent concrete pours. It is typically thicker and more robust, designed to handle the initial pressures and forces exerted by the water and the structure itself. The seal course is a layer of concrete poured directly onto the prepared seabed. This layer is crucial for creating a level and stable surface on which the main structure can be built. It also helps to seal the bottom of the cofferdam, preventing water from seeping in and compromising the construction site. It provides a level base for the pier and helps prevent erosion. Erosion can be a significant issue in underwater construction, as the constant movement of water can wear away at the base of the structure. The seal course helps to mitigate this risk, ensuring the longevity and stability of the pier. Once the seal course has cured, the reinforced concrete shaft of the bridge pier is constructed. This shaft is the main vertical element of the pier designed to support the weight of the bridge and transfer loads to the foundation. The use of reinforced concrete ensures that the shaft has the necessary strength and durability. Steel reinforcement bars are placed within the concrete to increase its tensile strength. These bars, often referred to as rebar, provide additional support and help the concrete withstand tensile forces. The combination of concrete and steel creates a composite material that is both strong and flexible, capable of handling the dynamic loads of a bridge. Section 8. Curing time. Building strength. After the concrete is poured, it needs time to cure. Curing is a chemical process that allows the concrete to harden and gain strength. During this time, the concrete is kept moist to ensure proper hydration. The curing period for concrete typically ranges from 14 to 28 days. The exact duration depends on various factors, including the type of concrete used and the environmental conditions. Section 9 Cofferdam Removal Unveiling the Structure This crucial phase marks the transition from temporary construction aids to the permanent structure that will support the bridge for decades to come. Once the concrete has cured and the bridge pier has reached its required strength, the cofferdam can be removed. This curing process is meticulously monitored to ensure the concrete achieves the necessary durability and resilience to withstand the harsh underwater environment. The removal process involves extracting the sheet piles and guide piles. These components, which once formed the protective barrier around the construction site, are carefully extracted to avoid any damage to the newly formed structure. 
This is typically done using cranes or vibratory hammers. These powerful machines are essential for the efficient and safe removal of the cofferdam components, ensuring that the process is both swift and precise. The removed cofferdam components can be reused for future projects or disposed of properly. This practice not only reduces waste, but also promotes sustainability in construction, aligning with modern environmental standards and practices. With the cofferdam gone, the newly constructed bridge pier is revealed, standing tall and ready to support the bridge deck. This moment is a significant milestone in the construction process, showcasing the culmination of meticulous planning and execution. The construction of underwater bridge piers is a testament to human ingenuity. It involves a combination of advanced engineering techniques, innovative problem solving and collaborative teamwork, all working in harmony to achieve a common goal. By understanding the challenges and employing innovative techniques, engineers continue to connect us across waterways, expanding our world and pushing the boundaries of what's possible. Each bridge stands as a symbol of progress, linking communities and fostering economic growth, while also highlighting the incredible feats of modern engineering.